Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to um, lead into my questions with a quick Rhode Island story about a uh, constituent um, and the challenges that his daughter uh, faced. Um, for their privacy sake, we'll just call the daughter Mary. Um, she had worked for 31 years at her local stop and shop bagging groceries. She's a fixture at the store. She knows everybody who comes in. People love her. She's a valued member of the team. She also has a severe learning disability due to lack of oxygen as a baby. Um, and she relies on payments from Social Security. In March of 2022, she received notice that her benefits were cut off and that she'd have to repay $17,000. You'll remember that that was a time when people were having trouble coming to work and staff were missing shifts or calling in sick. And there was Mar Mary, always eager to help, to pick up some extra hours to help the team through. And because of that, she inadvertently went over her maximum allowable level with no notion that that had happened. The first she knew about hitting the income limit was the letter that told her she owed $17,000 and her benefits would stop. You can just imagine what that felt like in that family. Um, luckily, her parents were there to help her navigate the appeals process, but not everybody has parents available to do that. It took two years to get this battle resolved, uh, and ultimately, Social Security uh, deemed that Mary was not overpaid, and she received ultimately a reimbursement of nearly $23,000, having gone through all this hell and nonsense. So uh, she was frightened enough, and the whole thing was such an unpleasant experience that she's actually reduced her hours just to steer well clear of having to go through this ever again, which I don't think is the behavior we want to encourage of people in Mary's situation. So, you know, I have this lived experience of a constituent who frankly really got screwed by the system here. And um, we see it not only with Social Security disability benefits, but we see it with a lot of benefits where you're going along fine and suddenly there's a cliff and the cliff is very, very steep and very, very dramatic in its uh, effects. And I'd love to have uh, each of your thoughts, perhaps as a question for the record, so you have a time to sit down and think about it and write something, about whether we should be considering a more broad solution to the cliffs problem that allows, um, for instance, senior cabinet officials to take a look at a terrible cliff and work around it just in the interest of humanity and good common sense um, what guardrails should be set up around that process? Should it be under the APA as part of a um, rulemaking so that people have a chance to provide appropriate notice and comment? But over and over and over again, I see people innocently slamming into the cliffs problem and uh, unintended and unfair damage being created in their lives. Um, and I'd also, I guess, Ms. Uh, Zuleger, um, if you wouldn't mind commenting on the extent. She didn't appear to have hit the asset limit problem, although that's a pretty easy one to hit at $2,000. Even a clunker gets you over $2,000. Um, I'm a supporter of Senator Brown and Cassidy's hike of that to 10,000 for individuals and uh, 20 for married couples. Um, but I assume that you would see that as a similar problem that we should also try to find a solution for. Thank you for the question. Your example very similarly matches my testimony and the example that I gave in that testimony. And it does sound like, uh, without having the details, that individual is probably on SSDI where the cliff exists because SSI doesn't have that same cliff drop off that we could term it. Um, and yeah, it was SSDI. Yeah. 
So that um, I do believe that there should be some considerations there. And it, it sounds very much like the example that I gave in my testimony as well. And should we treat the asset limit similarly? So the asset limit doesn't exist for the SSDI. It's the earnings and how those earnings are treated. And just on the surface, it does sound like that individual probably had some subsidies involved from that employer. And I um, hope that that's what, once those subsidies were developed, that may be why it was determined that she was eligible in the end. Um, the example that I gave did indicate that sometimes we have a very hard time getting proof of subsidies from employers and we can't make assumptions. We have to have the proof because we're, we don't have any sort of medical background and so we have to have proof from employers that subsidies exist. Thank you, Chairman. Made no sense, did nothing but harm to have Mary thrown off the program. I applaud your efforts to bring a common sense solution so that kind of uh, really cruel stupidity doesn't happen so often. Well, 